I'm not circumcised. All right, get up on the table. Tommy, on the table, right now. Well, folks, Purim got crazy. Let's rewind a little bit to catch you up. Like most of my ideas, this started as a DM. A gentleman named Yosef reached out and invited me to celebrate Purim with him in New York. This holiday takes its roots from the Book of Esther, where an evil man called Haman, an advisor to the king, conspired to annihilate the Jews from the face of the earth and nearly succeeded. But at the last moment, Queen Esther thwarted the plan of Haman and cleverly advocated for her people to the king. In a twist of fate, instead of the Jews getting wiped out, Mr. Haman himself was impaled on a stake. Jews celebrate Purim to remember their time of near extinction. Now, if you know anything about Orthodox Jews, they're known for their modesty and reluctance to be in the limelight. But for Purim, this is a time for community, for feasting, and to get a little saucy. You might even catch your favorite rabbi drunk in the street. In this video, we will go to some bumping house parties, attend prayers, go dancing at the synagogue, eat, drink, and be merry and maybe even get a little wasted. Folks, it's an honor to take you on this journey as we head to Crown Heights, a neighborhood in New York, to celebrate Purim with our Jewish friends. Enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're in Crown Heights, a neighborhood in Brooklyn, here to celebrate with Jewish folks the holiday of Purim, a holiday that celebrates surviving and not getting absolutely wiped out because a king's advisor at the time wanted to kill the Jews. Queen Esther stepped in, saved the day. But this is a holiday that you just might see your own rabbi drunk on the street. Let's explore, and we're gonna go meet our contact, Yosef. What can we expect today? We can expect a lot of Jews dressed up. Like, I don't even know if there's a real cop, but they, who knows? We can try it on the street, we're gonna make the walk, and we'll see people party. Hey. Happy Purim! How are you guys feeling? Really good. Happy Happy Purim. Purim. Happy Purim. You guys look like you're about to go rob a bank right now. We, we just did. did. We just oh. came back. What does this day mean to you? Today is the day that uh, the Jews were victorious. God saved us in a very hard God time. is always watching us and holding our hands. Happy Purim! Come with me, come with me, come, come, bro. Where are you guys from? Milwaukee. Milwaukee, let's go. Wisconsin? Yes. That's quite the scroll you got. Oh yeah, this is the way we do it. Why do you think Hammond wanted to just destroy the Jews? Well, Mordechai, he said these people are devoted to, uh, to something holy, God. The Megillah tells us he didn't want to bow to him, right? Everybody would like give full respect to Haman. Mordechai was like, I'm sorry, full respect I give to God. I can't give you full respect, which he realized that's not about Mordechai, it's about a Jew. Jews are devoted to one thing, God. Either way, we're gonna start. Let's go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Was he speed reading he's, Arabic? He's speed reading uh, Hebrew, actually. And that was going from... Sorry, I'm for him, heaven. And that was going from right to left, which is interesting. Yeah, so once you start, usually you just want to go straight through. Pretty much, they're reading the whole story. Everybody's supposed to listen to it twice, that story. So uh -huh. once at night, which was last night, and then once today, which was supposed to be this morning, but some people didn't get around to it this morning, so they read it throughout the day. So that guy was tardy on his readings, and that's why he was doing it? There was maybe a guy there who didn't hear it, so they have to read it for him, because that's that's the law. The law is everyone has to hear it twice, so. Look so, at this guy on this side. Yeah, there. so this is the rabbi. In this sect of uh, Judaism, they look up to uh, that specific rabbi. What sect are we? Is this so this Rod is Chabad. Yeah, so yeah. Nelk, 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 Brooklyn, bro. Yeah, what's up? Where are you boys from? We're from Milwaukee. No way! Yeah. Brewers, though. Yeah. Mets fans yes. there. We're Mets fans there. What's in here? Hey, come, come. Have a look, have a look, have a look. Hey, have one, have one, have one. If oh, you fit the whole heart. thing in your mouth, it's no. free. Oh, one bite, one bite, one bite, one bite! Hey! Oh, that's good, no? That's one bite, everybody knows the rules. One bite. 9.5. Whoa! I feel like people shit on Jewish food, but it's good. That's good, yeah. It's good. so good. Hey, you guys looking for something to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Look, look, go to this corner, make a right. Yeah. Halfway through the block, left hand side, my family's there. There'll be people on the porch, just hit it. Who is this guy? Within Judaism, there's like religious Judaism, ultra-Orthodox. So within that, there's Chabad, and we're Chabad, and this is our, our spiritual leader. What are all these scrolls and stuff on the wall? Open up, open up. Rosh Hashanah. This is the high holidays of the Jewish. One, two, three. Hey, oh, there you go. 
Thanks, Ma. Are you ready for the real food? Sure. The schnitzels. Hey, what's the schnitzel? That schnitzel is fried chicken. Are you ready for the real stuff? Hey, oh, daddy's going home. That's a ribeye. That's a ribeye. That's a ribeye. That's my death row meal as a ribeye. Do you guys have grass in your backyard? Yeah, dude. Because one thing I've learned about New York, no one has a backyard. There's kind of a like an underdog mentality, like us against the world in the Jewish community. Would you say that's accurate? We do believe that we are the chosen people because we are God's children. What I happened to people like me? How, how, what happens to people like you? Nothing. We're all living in the same world. Do you world. think we're I'm equal. going to hell? We're all going to hell in a certain sense. I think if we do good, then we're going to heaven. We're all going to heaven. Hell is more so, just like of a, it's a cleansing process before you get to heaven. There's also, there's also the concept of the seven Noahide laws that applies to all, you know, people in the world. There's seven laws. Give so. me the quick seven and I'll see if I'm... I don't know all of them, but thou shalt not kill. Respect your parents, your father and your mother. Worship, you know, idolatry. Are these the Ten Commandments? My no, 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 these are, oh. no, these are seven... Um, kind of. Uncle, yes! Today seems like a mixture of Halloween <laughs> and also, heck yeah, we're alive. Is that kind of the right interpretation? Not at all. Okay, I see a farmer, I see a leprechaun. Explain what's going on right now. We had a miracle. They were going to kill us, so we eat. That's it. Do you want yeah, get that schnitzel, boy. Get one, that schnitzel. One bite, one bite. So throughout the holiday, you'll see that everyone's going around to different families and giving them different Just gifts. Loading them up. With gifts. It's two blessings. So like, here you have a bottle of wine and you have um, chocolate. Wait, 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 wait. We gotta give you guys. <laughs> that's another commandment on this holiday is to give out charity to families in need. Anyone and, who asks, you're supposed to say yeah. yes. So, so part of every home is to have a charity box, right? So a golden charity box, which leads to this. Do you see this? And who do you give that to? People on the street? People in the community that need whatever it is, meals. Um, so my buddy studies at a good party down there, so we're gonna over there. Hi, How you dude. doing? What's good, dog? Good to see you. Yes, sir. What are we up to next? Doing our thing, bro. We're trapping on the streets right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you safe out here, bro. You safe out here. You don't have to look for passing cars, you know. How you doing? I'm coming. What's going to be happy on this holiday? Happiness is king, bro. And whose house is this? This is my parents' house. My lovely mother right over here. Some chairs. You're spreading the light to the world. Can I say hein? L'chaim. L'chaim. With a ch. Get the ch in there. L'chaim. When you want to spit on the floor, you're going ch. It's an H with cream cheese stuck in your throat. What are you really passionate about? About exploring places I've never been before. Oh, you're in the right place. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stick around. I love reading, I love wrestling, and I love jujitsu. Tommy, you know what l'chaim means? I can't do life alone. But I always got to have someone else to say cheers to. I always have to have someone else to say, you go, brother. L'chaim. In this world, there's a lot of people that say they don't have any friends. It's a very lonely world, but here I see a very strong and thriving community. It's the only thing we have in common is our souls. Everything else makes us different from one another, and our core yeah. essence of who we are is what we share with everybody else. Do a lot of Jewish families have all these books? Oh, oh, with the people of the book. Okay, be honest. Have you read every single one? No. Of them? It's By a journey, way, the baby. Owner, the owner of this house, Yossi, he probably read almost no, every single book. Every single almost. We went through it. To be a rabbi is an academic achievement, but then there's also a social responsibility to be a rabbi. If you're going to practice as an ordained rabbi, there are different levels. There are rabbis that become an academic rabbi where they've gone through the courses to be proficient in areas of Jewish law. And then there are rabbis that take on the responsibility of running a community and answering intricate questions of Jewish law and so on and so forth. How important is having a beard to being a Jew? The beard in Hasidic life carries a, a mystical dimension. There's a certain connotation of the flow of kindness that is represented in the beard. Are you optimistic that the world will be peaceful in the years to come? I'm not optimistic that the world will be peaceful in the years to come. I know that the world will be peaceful in the years to come. What advice do you have for the people out there? Add an act of goodness and kindness. If you light a candle in a dark room, the the whole room becomes light. Amen to that. Oh, Tommy G, how are you? Yeah. 
Can I ask you a question? What are those tassels for? These remind us of all the 613 commandments. That's a lot of commandments, Jerome. That's a lot of commandments. You can just by looking at them? It keeps you conscious of it. Exactly. In Hebrew, it's just called tzitzit. It's a little complicated. Oh, this is the hat that Haman made, that Haman used to wear. He wore a hat that looked like this? Like a tri- it was what like a douchebag. No, it's, it's like, like a pirate's hat. <laughs> Ha ha, Heyman, you suck. <laughs> exactly. Are you Jewish, by the way? No, I'm not. Oh, shame. We still love you. We still love you. Love you. <laughs> now that I hear all this chosen people talk, I do feel like I'm left out, though. No, 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 no. Do I just go to hell or what? No, no, no. no. Can I make a confession right now? Sure. My snake still has its hat. You're not circumcised. I'm not circumcised. All right, get up on the table. Tommy, on the table, right now. Yeah. Am I still allowed in this house? Absolutely. Sure. Yes, everyone is Welcome. Thank you for having me. But one, you, you didn't finish. You didn't finish the cup. Make it smaller. It's look better, smaller. <laughs> this is one of the most inviting places I've ever been in my life. Yeah. My belly's getting full, but I could eat more. I feel great. I love the feeling in the air. I love the people. I love the moment. It's a good day. Isn't oh yeah! Oh yeah! Is this your house? Yeah, my family, yes. And what's going on in the kitchen right now? Is someone still cooking right yes. now? What's in here? Is this the chicken soup? Mm. And who is this on the wall? Is that you? This is the Rebbe, Baruch Rebbe. But this is when he's younger. That's in the 50s, correct. Is it normal for a Jewish family to be a big family? I, mean, I know in the Bible it says be fruitful and multiply. And multiply correct. Is it similar with Jewish people? We're trying. Yeah? Yes. We, remember, we need three partners. Yeah. And the third one is the most important. God. Exactly. How many kids would you say the average Jewish family has? Uh, I know families of over 10, 12, 13, 14. How many kids did you have? We are blessed with the baseball team, nine kids. Nine kids? Mm -hmm. I want to be a dad sometime soon. Okay. What advice do you have to one me? At, one at a time. Just It's hard work, a lot of praying, and doing the best we can. Let's give you a little history. Let's go back 100 years before my father was born. We were in Russia, pogroms. The conditions physically were horrific. Prosecution by this, by the uh, Tsarists and by the Bolsheviks, and threatened just for, for just for being Jewish. Just we, for being alive. Just for being alive. And then uh, came World War II, the decimation of the Jewish people. How old are you? I am 65. So your parents grew up with in the era of Hitler. Correct. Was it shocking to them that something like that could happen? Of course, it's shocking to me too. Yeah. yeah. What inspiration or advice do you have to people that might be watching? They should always try to do good because at the end of the day, we are living in America. America is a country of goodness and kindness. And we shouldn't get distracted by all the darkness, by all the evil that's around us. So. My belly is full. I'm feeling wonderful. So save for We're still going tonight. We're still going. No contact with the women is a like you can't hug them, can't, can't shake their hand, nothing. and that's to keep you pure. Yeah, because bad things can happen. Bro, yeah, we don't, we exactly. don't unlock. So women is teenage until pregnancy very low in this community? Sure. Literally almost impossible. It happens to be some women do get married young here, which is a big thing. So sometimes it'll be like 19. How do you actually meet a girl? It's set up. There's a matchmaker and they put you together. They think, oh, it'd be a good idea. And then you go and then you date them hmm. for, let's say, I don't know, three months or something. Really? Yeah, people have resumes. People have legit have resumes. Wow. Oh, yeah. Welcome, we're here in 770 Chabad World Headquarters. We're really, really excited. We're going to give you a very, very brief overview. We're now going to ascend up these stairs. These are the very stairs that the Chabad Rebbe, the Rebbe of Lubavitch, Rabbi Nathan Mendel Schneerson, he used these very steps, which is... This is uh, the World Headquarters. World, so this is the nucleus, everything that we're familiar with, the activities of Chabad, you know, reaching out to the entire world, the entire globe. That, How that old is, is this place? Around uh, 1939 and 1940, when the previous Rebbe, there was a discussion about actually moving in here and calling this place home for the Chabad movement. People so this here, Rebbe is the, kind of the Moses of today. That's 100%. Over yes. here, this is a, a place which is literally saturated in holiness and Kedusha. It is the room where, firstly, the previous Rebbe used to hold some of the Fabrengans over the here. And this is the place in 1950, on the 10th day of Shvat, the Lubavitcher Rebbe assumes the mantle of leadership in this 
little room. He came here to assume the leadership. That's right. Now, I've heard that rabbi mentioned a lot, right? Yes. Now, I'm not going to say the name of this per this poet because he's not a good person to bring up in this community, but there's a, a someone that said the line, no one man should have all that power. Do you think you put a lot of power in one man with this, right? That's right. Is yeah. that a, what do you think of that? The, in scripture, we, we speak about often the different types of uh, models for leadership, different paradigms, uh, what a leader is, really. And spirituality, you could speak often about Yad Chazaka, which means a strong hand. You could be a leader, uh, a tyrant, so to speak. That's not a positive thing. We're speaking about Yad Rama, to lead a people in an upraised hand. And that means, you know, famously they used to say, Rabbi uh, Lord Jonathan Sachs used to say that, you know, great leaders, they have lots of followers. Over here it was different. This is a leader that created leaders. That's something just, you know, phenomenal, just to think about that, the depth. It's a very, very powerful um, concept. I see that he's giving business advice right here and talking about money. That's right. Was he a wealthy man? The Rebbe was the wealthiest person in the world spiritually and uh, materially and everything you name it. We're not speaking was he a billionaire? Any, we're not speaking here about uh, material wealth in the sense of, uh, you know, how many zeros you got in your bank account. We're speaking about a person whose entire life is devoted 100% to the Almighty. That means every single second of the day, there's not one thought that crosses the Rebbe's mind. Maybe I need to do this. Should I do this? Should I do that? that it, it didn't exist. You're speaking about a person whose life is Hashem, whose life is God. Did he have a wife? Of course, of course. 100. Do you think sometimes you thought about her instead of God? So again, what we have to emphasize is when you're dealing with such a level, such a level of spirituality and sanctity, every single thing in the mundane, in this physical reality, is an expression of his connection to God. There was nothing, no thought ever came across. Everything was God. Do you feel like you're putting this rabbi on the same pedestal that Christians would put Jesus? Oh, well that, that we're going to save for another time. I, I don't know. Uh, but if you're talking about him like he can't fail, like he's like... We're going to leave that maybe okay, uh, for another well. discussion. The answer yeah. is no. If you want to leave the, the explanation for another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going to take you out now. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank uh, you. Hopefully I was able to help. Thank yeah. you. God bless. No, no. Did I ask too many questions? No, no you're good. You're like how we were just like scooted out of there no, when I started asking no. too many questions. Yeah, no. the great rabbis of, of Jews, they're very, they're selfless. They're all about, they're all about God. It comes to um, the future when, let's say, there's, a, there's another world. There is another world, and that's what they believe in, and I believe that in the afterlife, right? So we live, this is just a passageway to get there. But, so we're um, next in our adventure, fellas. Now the last part of the night, a legendary Jewish singer is about to perform. Avram Free. Avram Free, bro. If you haven't heard of Avram Free, look him up, you son of a gun. Only bangers, bro. So the guy in the microphone is like the most right famous here. Jewish singer. We have another belt called the Atsida. Shortly after arriving, we were instructed to no longer film because this was a very exclusive gathering with one of the most famous Jewish singers of all time there. So we respected their wishes and enjoyed the music with the camera off. All right, folks, what a wonderful night. Community, experience, love, food, celebration. Man, we had a great time here. Any final thoughts? If you have an interesting story, an interesting community, if you have some people or some things that you want to put on, hit up Tommy G. He will come with respect, with positivity, with professionalism. We'll get the job done. He's got a great crew. So if you're sitting there and you've been watching his stuff and you're saying, man, Tommy G would totally tell my story in an amazing way, do it. I did it and look how it worked out for me. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Gang, gang, baby. People have been asking for shorts for a long time. We dropped them. They're on the site right now. Get yours while they last. They look like this and this. So get yours, TommyGMcGee.com. Hats sold out, but now they're back in stock too. So enjoy yourself, go shopping. And if you like this video, subscribe here and check out this video.